If you're a GitHub user, I bet you that if you watch this video until the end, you're going to learn at least one tip that's going to make your life easier. So let the challenge begin. My first boss tip will hopefully make your wallet a little bit more happier because we're going to look at how we can use GitHub to hopefully generate ourselves a little bit of cash. Now, when it comes to GitHub, there's actually two different ways that you can make cash. And the first one we're going to look at is around sponsorships. Now, the process for applying for sponsorship is pretty simple. First, you need to go over to GitHub slash sponsors slash account. Now, from this page, you're going to be prompted to apply for a sponsorship. Now, as part of this process, you're going to have to put in some personal details. You're also going to have to create an account over at Stripe, add in your bank details so you can get paid. Now, assuming you get approved, what we want to add is this sponsor, this project bit within our GitHub. And adding it is super simple. So what you want to do is go to settings, scroll down on general, and you can see here we've got sponsorships. Basically, you want to tick this and then add or edit this funding link. Now, what you'll see here is that in your .github file, there's this funding.yaml file. And within here, you can add in different links. Now, when it comes to creating this funding.yaml, there's a bunch of different properties and things you can do to get cash. And there's a bunch of different documentation over at GitHub that explains everything you can do and how to set up that sponsorship button. Right, now is probably the perfect time just to interrupt myself and to quickly remind you that if you're interested in accessing that link I just mentioned, or any of the resources that I talk about in this video, then I've also created a related blog article and you can find the link to it in the description below. So check that out if you want to learn more about anything I'm talking about. So check it out. Now, this is obviously one way of getting paid using the code that you write yourself. The next way that we can potentially look at making cash is to get paid by fixing other people's bugs and software. And this is where bounties come into play. So were you aware that many companies will willingly pay remote developers money to come along and fix some of their harder security or performance issues, or even just find vulnerabilities within their systems? Now, this sounds great. However, the challenge is actually finding these bounties in the first place. And this is where turning to some remote tools can help. Now, one really useful bounty tool is the search engine at algora.io slash bounties. So if you come over here, you're going to see a list of different bounties. The cool thing is you can see the money being offered and a description of what you need to do. Now, when you find something you like, if you click on it, it's going to jump you over to GitHub so you can access the code. You're going to see the description and the task, and then you can just raise a PR and hopefully get that cash. Now, just being 100% real here, then finding and fixing bounties is going to be hard work, and you're also not guaranteed to get paid. So for example, many of the resources that you might come across, like disclose.io slash programs, they're just going to list potential companies that may pay you a bounty if you fix stuff. Now, in this engine, you can see that all they're going to do is jump you over to some sort of contact us page or report a vulnerability page. But from here, you don't have any guarantees you're actually going to make some money. So if this does sound intriguing to you, my main advice would just to be a little bit picky and selective over what bounties you take on. And finally, it's probably worth mentioning that if you head over to the GitHub Marketplace, you'll be able to find some apps that can help you find bounties. So for example, we have a boss bounty here. You can install this app for free and it's gonna allow you to set your own bounties. It's also going to allow you to see different bounties that have been set in public repos much easier. My next tip could potentially help you land your dream job. And we're going to do this by making our GitHub profile pop. Right, let's quickly start with some role play. Now, let's say that this guy has applied for a job and I'm reviewing his GitHub. Now, for me, this would be a hard pass. So one, there's no information here about the person. Now, even though this person might have got some good stuff, he's basically not helping me find what I should be looking at. Now, let's compare this to my profile. So let's say that I want to learn more about me. In the top here, we've got some blurb. So I'm talking to you as a reader. I'm telling you how you can connect with me. I'm telling you what I'm interested in. Now, obviously, on the left here, you can see who I am, a bit about me. And more importantly, I'm telling you as a reader the things that I think you should check out. So for me, this would be a pass. 
Now, if you want to copy my profile, then I've created a video on how you can set this up yourself. Now, it's in the related tutorial in the description, but the highlights are first, you want to create a repo. The name of that repo needs to match your GitHub profile. And then within here, you need to create a readme.md. And then anything that you put within this readme is going to be displayed on your homepage. Now, to make your life much easier, instead of trying to figure out how to make this look nice, there's online profile generators like this one here and this one here. So if you're now sat there thinking, oh, my profile looks like that first example, then do yourself a favor, spend the 10 minutes and fix up your profile now. If you're a developer, I'm guessing you've got a folder on your machine that looks like this, like somewhere where you basically install all the different repos that you work with. Now, when you're working on a new ticket, Often I'll bump into a problem I know that I've solved before. And instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, sometimes I just want to look at my previous code for a bit of inspiration. Maybe I'll just copy that code, whatever. Now the problem is once you have so much code to look through, finding that code can be a pain and it can take you ages. Now, one solution to this challenge is to install a search tool locally, something like everything that you can see on the screen right now. And this is going to make it much easier for you to index all your files. However, the issue with this is it means you can have to have all of your code in GitHub checked out and it all needs to be in the right branch. Now, this is where GitHub search can be really useful. However, there is a slight challenge and that challenge is actually finding what you're looking for. Because if you just do a generic search on GitHub, it's pretty much useless because you're going to get a bunch of different results and it's going to be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. And this is where understanding four basic filters is going to save you a bunch of time. So the first one, if you're looking for code within your own repo, you want to prefix everything with user. Alternatively, if you're working in a team or a company, you want to put org here and just put your company name instead. So adding this user pram is going to filter out a bunch of results. So instead of scanning every single file, I'm just going to scan the files that I've created. Now, when it comes to finding code, I always know the programming language that I used to create that code. So this is where you should always add the language colon and then C sharp in my example, no space. So you can see straight away that I've gone from the 10,000 plus files in my repo down to 1.3. Now, alternatively, if you want to be a little bit more clever here, you can use path instead. And with path, we can do wildcard. So we can do wildcard dot C sharp. You can see here that I've got the same amount of files being returned. However, if you know the path or you've got some extra information here, this is going to allow you to filter these results down a lot better. Now, the next thing we can do is do symbol. So this is the code that we're looking for. So let's say that I want to do a search for a property, say it's called class. If I click on this code bit now, you can see I've now actually got 18 files. And this is so much easier for me to actually find the code I want. Now, this definitely isn't a GitHub search masterclass video. And if you want to learn a bit more about these filters, I have created a related blog, which you can find in the description below. However, another cool one I want to part you with is that if you just want to look at popular repos, you can do stars. You can put in the starred amount. And then when we go to repo here, you can see that we've been filtered to the most popular starred repo. In development, there's this famous saying, we spend more time trying to read and understand code comparing to writing new code. And this is especially true when we're looking at code online at GitHub. Now, I'm not sure about you, but navigating through a repo using Chrome, just it's not ideal. It's a bit faffy, it's a bit janky, and it's a bit hard to actually see how something's structured. So we can basically level up this experience in two ways. So the first one, if you go to the URL, did you know that on any repo, if you put in one S after GitHub, then you'll be jumped over to this third party tool. Now this third party tool is going to give you a Visual Studio Code IDE. And as you can see, it's much easier in my opinion to actually look around, jump around and explore the different files here. Now, some of you are probably wondering what else do we get? Well, you get a search so you can easily search for your files. We've got a source control history and view. We've got the ability to run and debug. We've got an extension manager and we've got this GitHub One S. So basically in here, if you want to look at your private repos, you're going to have to set up an access token. And then if you want to work on this within a Docker container, 
you can see we can click on this develop your project on GitHub, and then from here we're going to be jump over now this repo isn't an official thing you can see it's been created by hon link so this github one so if you want to check it out you can come here and learn more about it now the one thing to point out about this is that it's not an official github microsoft product however if we jump back to my repo on the github now did you know that if you put a full stop within your browser you're going to be jumped over to vs code online where you're going to get the official microsoft supported ide and from here you can see that again we've got search we can install our extensions we can then sync this up to our github profile all that kind of good stuff so the next time you need to understand a new repo on github instead of just cloning things locally or using the old github portal instead use one of these online alternatives now it doesn't really make a difference which one you pick they're both pretty good and i promise you you're going to make your life much easier And this leads me to my final tip. And this is a very simple one. However, it will help you give fuzzy vibes to the universe. Now, if you have any interest in getting into open source development, or maybe you just want to support a package creator that you really admire, then one tip is open up your package of choice in GitHub. And then at the end, just type in contribute to the URL. Now from this page, you're gonna find a list of the outstanding things that the package needs help with. So pick one of these, fix it, open up a PR, and you're giving that posy vibe to the universe. So that's everything that I want to tell you about GitHub today. And I hope you've learned something new. Now, if this type of content is your cup of tea, then before we part ways, do not, do not forget to smash on the subscribe button right now. Now, my name is John and I release a video every single Sunday aimed at making you a better developer. So you don't want to miss out. Also, it takes me ages to record these videos, so hit like and give me some motivation to keep doing it. Now, the other thing to say is that I did mention around that GitHub profile video I've created. I've linked it on the screen right now, so click on that if you want to see more of me. Otherwise, until next Sunday, happy coding.